Hello. Uh, good day to everyone online. My name is John Barker. Um, I'm a solutions architect with NVIDIA based in Washington, D.C. Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, deep learning framework Fiano. This is the uh, uh, fourth class in our introduction to deep learning uh, online course. We'll begin today with a uh, introduction to what is Theano and where does it fit into the deep learning ecosystem. Um, we'll cover uh, a, a simple uh, first application that's, that's kind of a model, uh, a recipe for how all applications are written in Theano. Um, then we will uh, move on to the specifics of Theano for deep learning and a more compli complex example and some related projects and examples. So the first thing uh, I think it's uh, probably important to say about Theano, the deep learning framework, is that Theano isn't really specifically a deep learning framework. It's, it's far broader than that. Um, it's actually a Python library for symbolic uh, maths um, developed by the University of Montreal. Um, it it's allows you to define almost any algorithm in a symbolic mathematical form and then compile that into uh, Python functions that can operate on numerical data. Um, the, it's tightly integrated with the Python ecosystem. You'll see that the uh, syntax of Theano is a lot like NumPy, the Python uh, nu numerical matrix library. Um, and it uh, has a fa very fast C, C and CUDA backend so that when functions are compiled from their symbolic representation into functions that can be applied to numerical data, this is done um, transparently uh, for different uh, computational architectures, in particular CPU and GPU, and then you can get the benefits um, of running on those different architectures. So what do I mean, to make it a little clearer, what do I mean by uh, a sim symbolic maths library or symbolic expression compiler? So uh, rather than uh, requiring that variables are defined with uh, numeric data associated with them from the start, instead in Theano, you define your variables like you would in algebra. Um, you give them a letter or a name, um, you, they're a symbolic representation, uh, so here we see an example where we have a vector uh, called X, a matrix called W, and another vector called B. Um, and then you can define symbolic expressions using these variables, but with a, with a syntax that is very f familiar uh, if, you're, if you know NumPy. Um, so here we show that we can do the dot product product of the vector X and the matrix W and then apply a sigmoid activation function to the output of that dot product summed with the, the B vector. Um, so at this point before going on, I will say, although this is a very intro, this is an introductory course and an introduction to Fiano, there is quite a lot of code in this presentation. It's, it's unavoidable because Fiano is a, a Python library. Um, but it's not critical that you're able to understand every detail in that code. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to guide you through what the code is achieving, and then when you do the hands-on lab yourself, you'll be able to look at it in more detail um, and actually experiment with the code yourself. Uh, so before we go on, just a couple of additional notes about Theano at a high level. Um, it's very mature. It's been developed and in use since uh, January of 2008, as I said, created at University of Montreal now has a large contributor community. Um, it also does have tools for inspecting and debugging code. The error messages that Fiano produces are different to standard Python error messages, so these tools can be helpful in understanding the root cause when those error messages are produced. Um, and a resource that I use a great deal, um, not not only when I'm using Theano, but for understanding deep learning algorithms more generally, um, are the tutorials and examples provided by the deep learning um, developers at the URLs shown on this chart. So, uh, in addition, uh, so Theano is actually gives you three things in, in the Python library. There's a language, so that is a syntax uh, for defining these symbolic variables, these symbolic expressions and functions built from those expressions. 
Um, there's a compiler which will take those symbolic expressions and variables, compile them into code that can be run on the CPU or GPU. Um, and then uh, there is a library of functions that you can use within the language that, that make it easier and more concise to define symbolic expressions. So for example, if you're building a convolutional neural network, there's a convolution uh, function, and if, you're, uh, and if you're building any neural network, there are various activation functions that you can call upon from the library. Um, so the basic recipe for building any application in Fiano, oh, my slide just changed, sorry. The basic application for be, uh, recipe for building any application in Fiano is that you define your symbolic expressions, the variables and expressions, you then compile a function that can compute numeric values using those expressions, then you apply that function to data. Um, so we'll start with a very simple example, but this is indicative of even the most complex neural networks. Um, so you will start in your Python program with importing Fiano as you would any other library. Um, a convention that's often used is that we import the, um, the, the tensor submodule from Fiano as, uh, this, as the letter capital T. So in a lot of Fiano uh, tutorials, you'll see that done. Um, we then <coughs> define, initialize symbolic variables. So if you were writing a Python program normally, you might see A equals and then some numeric value. Uh, in this case, all we're doing is telling Fiano that A is going to be a scalar, so a real number, and B is going to be a scalar. Um, you can also define your symbolic variables to be vectors or matrices as we showed before, or actually even much higher dimensional tensors, and I'll come on to that uh, shortly. So in this example, our application is going to attempt to compute uh, the product of these two scalar values, e, A and B, and output uh, the value Y. So we uh, define our symbolic expression um, using our symbolic variables a and B, and then Y automatically inherits its type as another scalar uh, from, from the fact that A and B are defined as scalars. Um, but at the moment, we have no way of um, actually giving numeric values for A and B and finding out what Y is. So this is where we have to compile a Python function uh, using the Fiano.function uh, method that defines what the inputs are to the function and what the outputs are, and then Fiano automatically uses the symbolic expressions to work out how you compute Y from uh, given values of A and B, and then we can apply that function to, uh, to numeric values that we provide. So nothing I talked about there is specific to deep learning. That was um, purely a symbolic maths and compilation example. So why is Fiano so widely used for deep learning? Um, has a number of, of useful features that we'll talk about in detail. Uh, so th as I mentioned, this symbolic, symbolic uh, computation, symbolic variables and symbolic expressions are not just for scalars, vectors or matrices, but indeed for multidimensional tensors. So here a tensor, um, uh, it's a word that's used in different contexts for different meanings. What we're loosely referring to here is any uh, n-dimensional matrix. So for example, if you're building a convolutional neural network, uh, the bank of filters that you're going to convolve your input images with are often represented as uh, a three-dimensional tensor, a three-dimensional array, and then when you apply those over a batch of images, the uh, feature maps, the activations, becomes a large four-dimensional array. So tensors crop up all over the place in deep learning, and all of the symbolic computation that Fiano provides can be applied to tensors. Similarly, I mentioned there are libraries of functions that can be applied uh, to the symbolic variables in Fiano. Uh, many of these functions are tensor operations that are specifically relevant to deep learning, such as convolutions or activation, uh, neuron activation functions. Um, Fiano is highly expressive. Um, any Really, if you want to add a new activation function or a new loss function, um, it's just the same as defining any other Python function as long as you uh, conform to the Fiano syntax. So the sky's the limit in terms of um, 
the network architectures you can build, the training algorithms you can use uh, within Theano. Um, and as I mentioned, you get this benefit that Theano is integrated within the Python ecosystem. So it's very easy to build Theano applications into larger Python data analytics uh, applications. But at the same time, Theano compiles down to efficient C and CUDA code, so you get uh, high-speed computation and the ability to transparently leverage GPU acceleration. Uh, so I'm just going to dive into a few of those important topics in more detail and also explain what I mean by the symbolic differentiation, which is an important feature of Theano. Um, so to give an explicit example of, of where uh, tensors or, or matrices are um, crop up in deep learning and how Theano allows you to define functions upon those. Um, we have here a, a very simple artificial neural network on the left. So we've got three neurons whose um, output values are x1, x2, and x3. We've got two uh, more neurons who act, whose output values are y1 and y2, and the x neurons are fully connected to the y neurons, and they have these weights uh, on the connections. Um, so if we want to compute what is the output uh, activation of Y1, um, it becomes this sum of products of, uh, of three of the weight values along with the, value, the output values of X1, X2, and X3, and then we apply this uh, sigmoid activation function. Um, similarly for Y2, it's a, a similar sum of products but with different weights. So this can actually be written, uh, this pair of nonlinear equations can be written as a nonlinear matrix equation, uh, y bar equals sig sigmoid of uh, w x bar, uh, where x bar is just the vector x1, x2, x3, y bar is the vector y1, y2, and w contains all of the weight values. Uh, so in Theano, we can define w and x symbolically, and then we can define this uh, uh, feed forward operation where we pass the activations from the X layer to the Y layer uh, using uh, tensor functions provided by Theano. Um, so if you're, math if you're mathematically, if you have a mathematical background, or even more generally, this is a very natural way to express uh, deep learning architectures and algorithms um, and then tie those to efficient computation. Um, as I mentioned, it's very easy to add new activation or loss functions. Um, you, you, uh, it's, it, it, it's much like adding any other Python function. So here I have an example of adding a leaky rectified linear activation function. That's just a, a neuron activation function that is uh, x time the uh, x times 0 0.01 for x less than zero or x otherwise um, and this uh, fiana tensor dot switch function uh, applies that activation uh, and, and it's actually um, can apply to element wise to uh, uh, tensors so x, the x input here can actually be a whole array of neuron activations um, Similarly, we can add, uh, easily add new loss functions. Uh, here we see um, the cross entropy loss being added again, uh, much like adding any other Python function. One of the really useful and important uh, features of, of Fiano for deep learning, um, I'll try and explain on this one chart, is this symbolic differentiation. If you recall from our very first introduction to deep learning class, we had this uh, simple, very simplified picture of super, supervised training of uh, deep neural networks, where we have uh, a large amount of labeled training data going into a deep neural network, which attempts to make classifications of the training data. And then we pass back the errors in those classifications um, to update the weights in the neural network so that it'll do better next time it sees uh, an image that it made an error on. So I didn't give any more detail in that first class about how this process of uh, passing back the errors to update the weights actually work. Uh, the way that works is that um, the, uh, the function to update the weights is actually a function of the partial derivative of the error with respect to the parameters. 
Um, it turns out if you formulate a deep neural network mathematically, uh, it's non-trivial to work out the partial derivative of the output error with respect to all of the parameters, especially as you go down to the lower layers of the network. Um, and so uh, it can be quite complex to do that analytically uh, using you know, pen and paper calculus. Thankfully, Fiano provides automatic differentiation for symbolic expressions. So here at the bottom, we see uh, we, we are calling our error uh, our cost in, in Fiano uh, syntax. So our cost is this value L. Um, we want to differentiate it with respect to W, which might be one of the uh, weight matrices that defines the links between one layer of the network and another. And, and all we have to do is invoke this t.grad function to get that partial derivative back as uh, this gradient variable. And then we can apply that uh, an update to our weight matrix W uh, using that, that great, uh, derived gradient. Uh, so this greatly simplifies implementing complex uh, neural network architectures and adding new loss functions uh, when you don't necessarily know how to analytically derive uh, the gradient. Okay. So moving on uh, to a slightly more complex example um, of how you would apply Fiano in a machine learning context. This example is still not um, a deep learning context. In fact, this is just going to be a, um, a simple fitting, a line of best fit, if you like, to a scatter plot of data. So we're going to try and fit a linear model to the blue scatter plot of data you see here. Uh, the Python code on the right shows how this data was generated. So it's effectively a linear space, uh, linearly spaced set of data in the x-axis. And then uh, um, it's the function y equals 2x uh, with random Gaussian noise added to get the y value. So we want to uh, hopefully learn the scalar value w, this real value, um, so I learned that that value should be 2, y equals 2x from this data. Um, and there's a credit at the bottom of the slide to where this example comes from um, and a, 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 a deeper um, tutorial on Fiano, which you may want to look at, um, that uses a similar example. So uh, to implement our linear model, we first need to initialize symbolic variables as before. So we need a variable for x and a variable for y, um, and these are scalars. Uh, we then define a, a symbolic expression for, uh, for computing y. In this case, we actually define that as a Python function itself. Um, and then at the next step, um, we um, initialize this W model parameter. So what you see here is a new term, this Fiano.shared. These are actually hybrid variables in Fiano. So I mentioned that symbolic variables don't need to have any uh, data associated with them when they're initialized. Shared variables do have data associated with them, but they can also be used in symbolic expressions. So that's how you have hybrid values. So it's typically used for defining model parameters, which are going to be learned through some uh, machine learning process. We then define our uh, model uh, using the model Python function to give us this y equals x times w. Um, it's a machine learning use case, supervised learning, so we need a cost function that tells us uh, the error uh, on a model prediction given the ground truth. So in this case, we define that symbolically again. Um, then we define the gradients that we will need to update uh, the parameters of the network. So as I showed before, this is, the great, this is the derivative of the cost function with respect to this weight w, which is just a single value. And then we define how we would like to update the uh, weight in uh, using that gradient. So I believe I just saw a question come through on the chat about how is backpropagation implemented in Fiano. Uh, this is how backpropagation is implemented in Fiano. Um, you define your cost, you define gradients, you define how to update your parameters uh, based on those gradients. You then have to define a function that will compile these symbolic expressions down uh, to efficient C or CUDA code. 
Um, again, we have to define our inputs and our outputs, but this time we also tell it what uh, symbolic expression to use to update uh, our parameters each time this function is invoked. Um, and this final uh, term you see, this allow input downcast equals true, um, just to a, so that's not left a mystery. Um, this is in there because if you want to use GPU acceleration, you need all of your floating point values in Fiano to be 32-bit floating point values. But by default, um, if you defined your values in the way I have shown here, uh, or if, sorry, if you, if, if, um, Python by default may define your parameters with 64-bit floating point values. So this uh, takes care of that difference when the function is compiled. Um, and then finally, we just uh, oops, sorry. Finally, we just uh, iterate over our data set. So this was train x for, uh, and train y for the coordinates of our data points. Um, we do that 100 times each time we invoke this Fiano function, which, and every time uh, we do that, uh, the cost is ca calculated based on our current value for W and the training data X and Y, and then we make an update to that uh, W value to reduce that cost function uh, next time we see that same piece of data. And what we find is that our, before training, um, I showed that we randomly initialized W to have the uh, value, let me just go back to that, to have the value zero. That was what was happening uh, here. W was uh, random, initialized to zero. Um, so that corresponds to a straight line, Y equals zero X. After 100 iterations, uh, W has, uh, become very close to two, and we have a good uh, line of fit for the data. So again, everything I just described, that machine learning example, is completely indicative of um, how you would define a more complex uh, machine uh, learning use case where you're using uh, stochastic gradient descent to train a deep neural network. Um, the Really, the only added complexity is how you keep your code efficient um, whilst defining some of these much more complex layer types um, and symbolic expressions, such as a convolutional layer. So here, on this chart, I've got an example of how a convolutional layer might be defined as a Python class. Um, again, it's not important to understand all the code here, but what you're seeing is that we would uh, give the class an initialization method that would take some input data. It would uh, randomly initialize W here, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, convolutional filters that are going to be applied to the input data. It would then apply uh, the convolutional operation using that value of W you've initialized. Uh, it would then apply a uh, nonlinear activation, in this case, a hyperbolic tangent function, and we specify which parameters of this layer are going to be trainable, um, and in this case, it's just going to be our W value. Um, so that's how you might define a convolutional layer as a Python class. So then to define a, a deep neural network architecture, you simply stack instances of these Python classes where the output of one class, uh, of one instance becomes the input to the next. So here we see two convolutional layers. Uh, we pass in parameters that specify the filter sizes and the input data size. Um, and in the first case, in the case of layer naught, which would be the first layer, uh, we um, uh, pass in this layer naught input. But then when we get to the uh, second layer, layer one, which is also a convolutional layer, the input there is actually the output of uh, the first convolutional layer. And that's really how you define any more complex uh, deep learning architecture in Fiano. Okay. So as you will have seen, um, Fiano is very expressive. Uh, you can very easily define much more complex architectures, loss functions, activation functions, training algorithms. Uh, along with that expressiveness, though, comes a um, uh, quite complex code in some cases. Um, if you 
instead uh, want to build some of the very standard neural network architectures and apply them to a data set much like you did with CAFE in the last lab, there are other libraries that have been built on top of Fiano which do uh, take care of things like defining these Python classes for convolutional layers um, and instead they, um, they just provide those as methods or, uh, as functions in these libraries themselves. So some popular ones shown here are Blocks, uh, Keras, and Lasagna. These are all machine learning algorithms that are shown on this chart here. And as I say, the, the objective of them is to typically to simplify the syntax and the interface for artificial neuro, neural network training, but at a slight expense of expressiveness. Um, so I have an example next of uh, how you might define a convolutional neural network using Keras. Um, I've chosen, not chosen Keras for any specific reason. Um, this isn't a statement that we uh, recommend it over any of those other libraries built on top of Theano. Um, this is just one example, and I recommend you, you look at those other libraries and projects too. Uh, most of them, I believe actually all of the ones listed there are open source projects. Um, so if we were defining a convolutional neural network with an input layer and then a convolutional layer with max pooling um, and then a fully connected or dense layer with uh, dropout regularization and then another dense layer doing our final classification, in Keras we can define that in the uh, around 20 lines of code shown on this chart. Uh, we, we import a number of the Keras sub-modules, which provide the particular functions we will need for defining this architecture. And then in the same way as I described before, the layers of the architecture are simply um, instances of, of, pipe, of, the of functions from the Keras library chained together with the output from one being the input to the next. Uh, but what Keras has done is uh, taking care of defining those uh, defining those classes for you. Um, and then you can also uh, specify the parameters of your uh, training algorithm quite simply. Here we choose that we're going to train with stochastic gradient descent with some actual modifications uh, such as nestor of acceleration and momentum. Um, we, can def we define our loss function and then actually train in the model is a, is, a, is a single line. So as you see, much more concise than doing this yourself in raw Theano, uh, but um, uh, at, at, the express, uh, at the cost of some expressiveness. So I want to move on to a few examples now um, of where Theano has been applied uh, to different problems. Actually, both of these examples um, uh, uh, both slides of examples I have are from the, uh, the same researcher um, called Sander Dielman, who is, uh, works at Google DeepMind in London and is also a PhD student at the University of Ghent. Um, he was previously an intern at Spotify, um, and whilst there, he used Theano to develop a uh, convolutional neural network approach for taking music audio uh, as input, representing that as if it was an image by uh, representing it as what's called a MEL spectrogram, so a time frequency representation. And then at, at the output, computing latent factors or tags that might be applied to that music to describe it, so that when you have a collection of those latent factors or tags, um, you can... Um, <coughs> find similar music, do similarity-based search on different songs. Um, so Fiano allowed him to take a convolutional neural network and apply it to this non-standard data type um, very easily. Um, and there's a great blog post on this work at the URL shown on this chart. Um, so Fiano was also used uh, by the same researcher in two Kaggle contests. If you're familiar with Kaggle, these are online data science contests, um, and it was actually used to win both of these contests. One, uh, this little picture on the left shows a number of data samples from one contest, which was to um, classify the type of galaxies from a radio astronomy data set. And the other cha uh, challenge was to classify the type of plankton from underwater imaging data. Uh, the reason I put both of these examples up was 
uh, again, it was the extensive, easy extensibility and expressiveness of Fiano that allowed Sanda to very easily come up with new and creative data augmentation strategies um, that proved to be and weight sharing strategies for the network that proved to be critical in winning these competitions. Um, what I mean there is data augmentation are um, um, modifications you make to your data as it's ingested into the network so that um, the network better generalizes as you train it and weight sharing is a way of reducing the number of um, parameters you need to train in your network um, uh, and providing um, better <coughs> better translation invariance in your detector. So it, Fiano really enabled the easy addition of those functions. Um, finally, I mentioned earlier, uh, finally for the examples, I mentioned earlier the very good tutorials and examples provided by the deep learning, uh, by the Fiano developers. Um, they, they start at very simple examples, um, similar to some of the ones we have in the hands-on lab, so linear regression and multilayer perceptrons, but they go right through to some of the most cutting edge uh, recurrent neural network formulations and work being done on unsupervised learning. Um, both of these, again, are very easily enabled by the expressiveness of Fiano. Um, to do un unsupervised training, you can quite easily specify that your loss function takes as input the output from the top layer of your neural network, but also the original input data in, in what's called an autoencoder formulation. Um, and if you want to define recurrent neural networks, you can e easily define that some of your networks in your layer receive their last state as input at the next state. Um, so there are some great examples of Fiano being applied uh, in those use cases. <clears throat> so what does it take to run Fiano? Um, Fiano will run on um, many distributions of Linux. I didn't list them all here. Uh, certainly Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, you can find the complete list on the Fiano website. It will run on Mac OS X and it will run on Windows. Um, the requirements are Python greater than 2.6, uh, the G++ compiler, um, and uh, NumPy and SciPy, Python libraries, and then a BLAST library. <coughs> uh, basic, as Pitano is very easy to install, the most basic instructions if you want to use the, the, uh, the current um, uh, stable release is either use pip to install Fiano or easy install. Um, if you want to get some of the bleeding edge installs with developmental features, you can clone the Fiano source from GitHub um, and there's a Python setup script uh, to install it. Um, when you install Fiano, uh, you'll want to configure it. Um, there are three ways that you can pass configuration parameters into Fiano. One is you can define a .fianorc file. Uh, this is just a uh, text file that lists a set of parameters such as do you want to use GPU or CPU. Um, this is typically where you'll set parameter settings that you always want every time you use Fiano. So for example, setting that you want to run it on the GPU. Um, if you want to set uh, choose a setting for just one job, then when you actually invoke Fiano, so you do Python on a, uh, you run the Python command against the script that's going to use Fiano, um, then you uh, can pass in different Fiano flags at that runtime, or you can actually make changes to the configuration in the middle of your Fiano code using the Fiano.config submodule. Um, to leverage GPU acceleration, uh, you, there, again, there are three, three ways uh, that you can add the device equals GPU flag to the .fiano RC file. You can pass in a Fiano flag device equals GPU uh, when you invoke your script, or you can uh, set that, uh, use the fiano.config submodule and set the device as GPU in your code. Um, and if you uh, have QDNN installed, um, as part of your CUDA installation, including uh, version 3, um, then Fiano will automatically pick up that that is there and use that to accelerate um, uh, some of the deep learning tensor operations. 
so that's the, all the slides I was going to cover in today's uh, webinar. Um, I'll move on to questions now um, and then come back to uh, close up with the schedule and hands-on lab at the end. Uh, so one question is, uh, does Fiano have to be compiled with support from the GPU um, at compilation time? Uh, if you have CUDA installed, when you inst uh, install Fiano, um, then when you compile a Fiano function uh, based on the uh, Fiano.rc configuration I mentioned before, the GPU will be, in you, be used, but there's nothing different that you need to do in terms of uh, Fiano installation, assuming you have a working CUDA installation to get GPU support within Fiano. Um, <clears throat> So uh, what class of GPUs are minimally required for Fiano? Um, any CUDA-enabled GPU basically um, will, will be able to use Fiano. Um, if you want to try out a GPU um, instance and you don't have one on your local machine, you could use Amazon or SoftLayer, both offer cloud instances with GPUs that are, are capable of running Fiano. Um, or if you have a GeForce Home gaming card, that would work, work great as well. Um, another question was, what exactly is activation in the context of neural network structure? Um, so th an example of an activation function is the, the sigmoid function I mentioned earlier. Uh, so shown here for our very simple artificial neural network, we applied after we did the sum, the sum of products of the weights and the X neuron values, we applied the sigmoid activation function. Uh, activation functions are nonlinear functions that you apply to the sum product, uh, uh, sum products that are that are form artificial neurons. And the reason we do this is that if we stack together many layers of artificial neurons and we didn't have a nonlinear function uh, in that layer, we would only actually be able to still learn a linear function by the uh, larger stacked neural network. So we have to introduce nonlinearities so that we can learn more complex nonlinear functions that map our raw data to outputs. Um, so you don't have to use the same activation across your whole network. You can have different activations on each layer of your network. Um, the sigmoid was the, is if you like, the traditional activation function, and it's just really a, a function that takes um, arbitrary real valued numbers and squashes them into the range zero to one. Um, uh, it's, it's to, in very modern neural networks, it's fallen a little bit out of favor um, people now more typically use um, what are called rectified linear activations, um, in, especially in convolutional neural networks, which is where you take the, uh, the, sum, the sum of products of your, of your neuron inputs and weights, and then you uh, take the maximum value of zero or that sum of products. Um, or people uh, often use hyperbolic tangent function uh, as a nonlinear activation function. Um, another question was, uh, how is this related to autoencoders? Um, uh, there's no, uh, so activation functions are used um, on the layers of a neural network that is in an autoencoder, but there's no uh, unique relationship between activation functions and autoencoders. Um, the relationship is the same as between activation functions and any other type of neural network. Um, in an autoencoder, what is different is that you are not training your network in a supervised uh, training fashion where you have uh, labeled training data. Instead, you're training your neural network so that the error is computed by comparing the um, the output of the network to the original input. So to give a specific example of that, you can train an autoencoder on images um, to attempt to produce a dimensionality reduced feature vector that describes the image. So maybe you have 256 by 256 pixel images and you would like to have 
uh, 10 dimensional vectors that describe them so that you can do quick similarity based search on the images. Well, in an autoencoder, you would take the, the 10 dimensional vector learned by the network, you would then uh, upsample that to produce a reconstructed image, and your error would be the comparison of the original input image and that reconstructed image. <clears throat> Um, how can we create LSTMs with Fiano? LSTMs are long short-term memory networks. They're one of the uh, popular recurrent neural network types that are being applied in natural language processing, uh, arguably the, the most popular type at the moment. Um, there is actually a great Fiano, uh, Fiano tutorial on the website I mentioned before. Um, if you go to the deeplearning.net slash tutorial slash LSTM.html, um, then you can see an example of doing exactly that. Um, so there's a number of questions about the uh, advantages of using Fiano for deep learning compared to CAFE. Um, so the, the philosophy of Fiano is, is slightly different. Um, it's not, a, as I mentioned earlier on, it's not a deep learning framework per se. CAFE very much is uh, specifically aimed at deep learning and today largely aimed at training convolutional neural networks on image data, um, although you can do more as we saw last time. Um, Fiano is much more general than that. It's, it's, uh, it's the symbolic maths library with compiler, uh, so you can define uh, it is much more expressive than CAFE in defining um, uh, algorithms, but not necessarily uh, neural network training algorithms. Um, uh, but the flip side to that expressiveness is that it can be harder to get into, harder to learn initially. Um, but some of the libraries built on top of Fiano certainly help that if you're trying to get into Fiano specifically for, um, for deep learning. Um, can Fiano be executed without GPUs? Yep, that's a great question. Um, yep, absolutely it can. Um, you um, can pass this device flag in with set to CPU and you can execute on CPU, uh, but it will, for deep learning applications, uh, it will be much slower. Um, <clears throat> um, one question is what Python editor do I use? It's Sublime Text 2. Um, oh, a great question here. Um, I mentioned earlier that when you're doing deep learning applications, you have to define, you have to uh, use 32-bit floating point values. Again, um, the three methods I mentioned for configuring any of the parameters in Fiano can be used. So just flip to that slide. Um, in the .fiano RC file, you can specify uh, there. You specify the parameter float x to be float 32, uh, but you can also do so passing it in at runtime or um, mid-code for a settings change. Um, is Fiano compatible with Ubuntu 15.04 or any other Linux distributions? Uh, yeah, as mentioned, it works on many Linux distributions, also Windows and Mac, um, and even you can compile it on the Jetson TK1 if you would like to run Fiano on an embedded GPU. Um, <coughs> So uh, I mentioned that there were tools for ins inspecting and debugging Fiano code, um, and the question said, I've heard Fiano is hard to debug because of symbolic declaration. Um, Fiano can be, it can be uh, somewhat complex sometimes to trace back Fiano errors through the, what's called the computation graph, so that is the sequence of symbolic expressions that are being applied to compute your answer um, and trace the root error. Um, but there is a debug mode. Um, you simply add another one of these Fiano flags or configurations options called debug mode to the code. 
um, and this can provide more verbose exploration um, explanation of where in the computational graph errors have occurred, uh, but you should be aware that you don't want to run in debug mode all the time uh, because it actually will slow down your Theano code somewhat. Um, someone asked, uh, is the best way to use Theano with Anaconda Python? Um, I, I like using Anaconda Python. Um, it, it tends to be a pretty hassle-free way of getting all of the dependencies um, and libraries that you would commonly want to use in conjunction with Theano. Um, but it's not certainly not necessary for running running Theano. <clears throat> uh, so what does it mean when a, sh a shared variable is initialized to borrow equals true? I think I showed this earlier. Um, oh, I didn't show this on this chart. Uh, so here we have uh, that W is a Theano shared variable. So I mentioned that that's a hybrid variable. It can be used in symbolic expressions, but also has uh, a numeric value. Um, what borrowed equals true, true does, it prevents um, multiple copies of the data being uh, the numeric data being created in memory effectively. So when you define, uh, for example, a, uh, a, a Fiano shared parameter with borrowed equals true and, and you compile your function to GPU, that the value will be copied over to GPU and it won't be duplicated or copied over multiple times. <coughs> um, so what out-of-the-box solution does Theano have against vanishing, exploding gradients and deep architectures? Um, well, so Theano doesn't offer an out-of-the-box solution to that problem. Um, really, none of the uh, none of the networks do, um, and none of the sorry deep learning frameworks do. Instead, uh, but you can very easily define recurrent neural networks and many of the modifications that have been introduced over the last few years in the research literature, uh, such as gated neurons, that do help to uh, deal with the vanishing exploding gradient problem. Um, so again, yeah, that's a great example of where Fiano is massively um, uh, expressive uh, you can certainly get the latest research paper with a method for dealing with exploding or vanishing gradients, um, and you can implement that in Theano, uh, but uh, you, you would need to do that work yourself. <clears throat> um, so uh, here's a great question, actually coming back to the comparison between CAFE and Theano. Um, how do they deal with large data sets? Um, large images, and I would kind of extend this question to really how is data managed in Theano generally. Could, because if you did the hands-on lab and the webinar last a uh, couple of weeks ago on, Fia on CAFE, you will have seen CAFE offers a large number of tools to help you manage data. Um, you uh, are kind of shielded from the data structures that are being used in the back end for efficient um, application of deep neural networks to the data. So Fiano doesn't um, uh, provide that same level of data management uh, functionality. Uh, and again, uh, it's a, an example of the trade-off of expressiveness versus um, ease of use. Uh, you can use any method you like in Python to manage your data, to pass your data into Theano functions, to save your Theano models. Um, as I mentioned, Theano models are um, essentially a set of Python classes and a Python function. So you, any way that you might normally uh, back up an instance of a Python class, such as a pickle in a pickle file, um, you can use within Theano as well. Um, there, there's no specific difference um, between Theano and CAFE for handling large, large data. I mean, um, it really boils down to uh, 
um, the data processing pipeline and the infrastructure resources you have in your Python environment for handling large data. <coughs> um, does Theano support other languages? Um, I don't believe so. I believe um, I, I believe all of the Python interfaces and the libraries I built uh, mentioned before uh, are, are also uh, sorry Theano libraries I mentioned extensions I mentioned before are also Python. Um, Uh, what is the difference between MATLAB and Fiano other than programming language? Um, again, it's that, 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 that MATLAB, MATLAB is closer to NumPy. Uh, MATLAB is a um, numerical matrix uh, uh, language um, at heart. Fiano is a symbolic maths language. Um, that's the, the fundamental difference. <clears throat> How is using Theano.function different from calling the same function defined separately multiple times? That's a great question. Um, Theano.function, uh, when you call that, it's not just saying define a Python function uh, if you use the usual Python def, um, uh, as we see on this chart here, def model xw. Um, Fiano.function is actually telling Fiano to define this function using uh, the previously defined symbolic variables and compile that down to efficient code for application to numeric data on the architecture. So you're not just defining a Python function, you're actually telling Fiano to compile a function on the underlying CPU or GPU that can be run on efficiently on the underlying CPU or GPU hardware. Um, just coming back. Uh, most of the examples, uh, people say most of the examples they see are for image or audio recognition or time series prediction. And we've seen that CAFE is more suited for images. What frameworks and algorithms are suited for classification on time series data from sensors? Well, Fiano, you could certainly do time series classification on sensors. Again, as I mentioned, really the sky's the limit for uh, the types of um, data you can ingest and the architectures you can build and train. Um, but there are other frameworks uh, specifically for other applications. So for example, if you're doing audio, you may want to go uh, speech recognition, you may want to look at the Caldi framework, and you'll hear about Torch in the next class, which can also uh, has a similar level of expressiveness uh, for different applications. Uh, but for specifically for time series data from sensors, um, I think Fiano would be a fine choice to start with. Um, Does, uh, how does one use Theano with multiple GPUs? Um, that's a great question. Um, it's uh, similarly, uh, there's, there's currently, as far as I'm aware, no direct um, uh, parallelization for deep learning applications across multiple GPUs, whether it be the data parallelism or the model parallelism approaches, but certainly, um, I you could implement that in Theano um, uh, yourself. Uh, I will actually revisit that question at the Q&A next week because I, I have to admit I'm not 100% sure of the, uh, the current state of multi-GP usage in Theano. Can Theano be used for natural language processing? Uh, yep, absolutely. Um, in fact, Fiano is great and popular for, for natural language processing because of its, of its uh, tight integration in the um, uh, Python ecosystem. Um, Python is very powerful for uh, string manipulation um, and has uh, associated libraries that can do useful things like um, tokenization of text data, um, and so those can be very easily integrated with Fiano. And as I mentioned earlier, really the most popular current approach for uh, natural language processing in the deep learning context are these long short-term memory networks, a type of recurrent network, 
and there's examples of those being implemented in Ciano. <clears throat> Uh, dipped in through the questions here. Um, are there publicly available example implementations of common deep learning elements, or do you have to start from scratch? Uh, absolutely, there are uh, examples at the deeplearning.net slash tutorial URL I showed before, so I would recommend not starting from scratch. Um, Similarly, if you're going to use one of the common deep learning approaches that have been well demonstrated, like convolutional neural networks for image classification, I would recommend looking at the libraries such as Keras and Lasagna that I mentioned before. Uh, but when you're learning Ciano, I would recommend starting out um, looking at something like those tutorials of how the common elements are implemented as Python classes in Ciano. Um, because uh, Fiano is a func what's called a functional programming language. Um, if, you are, if you've not programmed in this way before, um, it may take a little bit of adjustment. There is a bit of a learning curve. Um, so those examples are a great way of helping you um, understand the, uh, the, f the Fiano syntax and process. Um, uh, so one question quite quite uh, a deep question here about Fiano is how to use Fiano's scan function for recurrent neural networks. It's, we can't really answer that. It's not really a one-line answer. Uh, scan is basically a, a, an efficient way of doing loops in Fiano. Um, how you would use that? In a, well, w one answer is it, it's not really specifically closely tied to recurrent neural networks. Um, so I recommend understanding the scan more generally, but it's, uh, uh, we would have to discuss a lot of recurrent neural network theory to really explain that. Um, are there references for compiling Ciano on the Jetson TK1? Because I mentioned that. Uh, it's exactly the same as compiling on, on any, other Linux in, uh, any other installation. You can just do pip install Ciano and you're done. Uh, okay. um, are there examples of Fiano being used for regression, so prediction of continuous numerical data, ideally time series? Uh, so, the simple linear model example I showed is a regression. We're computing this value W, um, uh, which is a continuous value. Uh, again, I, I recommend the same tutorials, um, in particular the recurrent neural network um, tutorial on the deeplearning.net website um, uh, touches on time series prediction. Okay, and I think I've got time for one more question. Um, just to find an unanswered one. Uh, oh, a good, great question here. Are there some converters from CAFE models to uh, Fiano, Lasagna, or Keras libraries on top of Fiano? Yes, there are. Uh, um, I don't have a reference for one um, uh, off the top of my head, uh, but there certainly are uh, a, a couple of open source uh, examples on GitHub of, of people converting CAFE models into Ciano models. Um, I would say, it, I mean, that's a somewhat complex thing to do. Um, it's the easy part is getting the CAFE model. It, uh, uh, Julie just provided an example in chat. Um, the easy part is getting the CAFE model out um, into Python, but actually structuring a, Fia a deep neural network in Fiano that can make use of that model um, is, is quite a complex proposition. Um, okay, so I will just uh, finish up here and move on to uh, mention that uh, 
Next week, uh, same time, we will have the office hours for this class. I will revisit a couple of those que uh, the questions, such as multi-GPU in Theano, um, and take any other questions you have, either about this webinar, the course in general, or the hands-on lab. And then one week after that, uh, my colleague Alison Lowndes from the UK will be uh, giving a Getting Started with the Torch Framework webinar. Uh, the hands-on lab for this, uh, associated with this webinar is live now at the uh, bit.ly address shown on this chart. Um, as, as always, it, all you require is a browser, no GPU required on your part. We'll provide the GPU, um, and the lab will be free till the end of this uh, series. Um, so thank you once again for uh, participating today and look forward to answering some uh, more of your questions next week.